So yeah, that's you know. That's amazing because your your history. I, I want to talk more about it. I, yeah. I want to officially welcome you to yeah, the yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we can go back and revisit. Yeah, I, I just, mean, we talk. We should actually be talking about all this. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. I, I want to officially welcome you to the yeah. to okay. the podcast. So okay. uh, you know. Uh, Ty Granderson Jones, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate you coming on. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> now I'll take these off. You've been filming all the time? Yeah, I have, but I'm not. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to. Okay, you're going to welcome me like this? Uh, I just wanted to. do some Hollywood stuff. Yeah. It's <laughs> not, you know. Yeah, no, no. I'm the, I just I'm wanted just, to inform you. I'm just messing with you, and then, and, then I'll, and then I want you to know that whatever, after I welcome you on, that now it's going to go in. Okay, but yeah, yeah. even 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 so though, yeah. it's it's so like kind of unofficial. Yeah. If you if you say something and you're like, dude, I don't want, I'll yeah, take yeah. it out. It's not a problem. Yeah, it's I'll not, tell you the only thing. I'm, not just, I'm not just I'm not chronologically dating myself. No, I understand. I don't mind talking about my journey, and then if they yeah. figure it out on their own, that's great. Yeah, no, but I'm not I gonna mean, say I'm. <laughs> yeah, no, I I you know. I don't. You know, I understand yeah, that, yeah, and yeah. I respect it. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, um, yeah. I mean, this is it. It's pretty simple, pretty cut and dry. Right. You know, and uh, I, again, I just thanks so much for taking your time to come yeah. and do this, man. Hey, man, this I'm is humble. so awesome. I, I, I'm already like perplexed by everything you're saying. Right, right, right. And it's just like it's amazing. Yeah, and I don't mind. I don't mind you. You know, intercutting um, using that except the chronology. Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> the 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 actual. Age. <laughs> oh no, no, yeah, I'm not gonna put I mean. that in there. Yeah, yeah, don't yeah, worry, yeah, that that'll yeah. stay between me and you. Yeah, don't worry. you know the reason why is you know this industry is so weird, man. Because you always have to be in consideration for something, and when you're a star, they don't care because you're making them money directly. Your product. But when they say, "Well, how old is Ty?" Right. You know, and then once they know, it kind of takes you out of the equation of you even being considered, and that goes for you too. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, when it comes to, you know, I don't have it, obviously the experience, yeah. but I can, I can say, yeah, like when you're looked at as a product, yeah, so they're yeah. gonna look at your yeah, age, yeah. they're gonna look at your yeah. race, yeah. Yeah. your yeah. height, everything. And, and they, and they shouldn't, it shouldn't be for me. It should be about what can Ty play? How is he looking? Sure. And not how, but once again, when you're not Denzel, <laughs> you know, it's a whole nother ball game. You know, because then they, they go, you don't even get consideration, especially if they have not seen you in a while. They figure, oh, he's, you know. Yeah, I mean, and it's just. Humped a, over, old and gray, but I'm an right. anomaly, man. Right. I'm an anomaly right. by the grace of God. That's just how I roll. Yeah. You know, I've always had great DNA. I've always been oh, an athlete. Dude. Well, you've taken care of yourself. Yeah. And it shows. Not, 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 not always. Even when I was abusing drugs and things. Uh, I've done a lot of drug abuse in my life and a lot of really bad things, um, but the weird thing is no matter uh, how I was pushing the envelope on the negative, staying up all night, abusing drugs, I was in the gym the next morning working just as hard out of guilt. <laughs> well, that, and that's, you know, and that'll help. Yeah, but that will still not, yeah. you know, yeah, like, right. prevent you from getting a heart attack. Right, right, right. Thirty-five. You like, know? like my man, God forbid, which I did a movie with. That's an urban classic uh, called Tapped Out. Okay. That Prince, the late Prince, who was a pal of oh, mine. Oh, sure. Prince um, was a silent producer on it, and Ma and Madonna uh, distributed it through Warner Brothers through her independent company, which is no longer anymore called Maverick Entertainment. But it was called Tapped Out, starring me, Coolio. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Coolio did some stuff in the back of it. He yeah. was in the Batman Forever. Flight. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I just talked to Coolio about maybe six, seven months ago, and now he's dead. Coolio passed yeah. away? I Coolio just that. passed away about three days ago, man, and he was here visiting in L.A. I oh, was my gonna God. Ask, it I was didn't, ask did him. it make news? Yeah, it was all over the news. Okay. <laughs> See, yeah. that's how unplugged I am, yeah. man. Yeah, I just, yeah. Oh, yeah, he... Uh, he was here visiting because he lives in Vegas. He was here visiting in L.A. And actually, we were going to hook up. And um, he went into a palace at his house bathroom and never came out. What happened? No one knows just yet. They think he had a heart attack. But what were we just talking about? Was he on drugs, you think? I don't I mean, want to say that. I don't want to say that. I don't want to put that out there into yeah. the official. But I wouldn't be surprised. Some cats, what were you just saying? Yeah. That's not going to stop you from getting a heart attack. 
Yeah. Didn't you just say that? Yeah, I did. And, you know, the only reason I say that is because, you know, with getting, you know, watching stuff on YouTube about the fitness industry, you know, I I watch a lot of things, not a lot, but I I watch things on steroids. Yeah. And there's, you know, guys that are involved with that say, like, dude, you can eat like shit and you can do all these drugs and this and that. And it, it doesn't matter how many hours in the gym you spend. It's gonna be bad for you. Yeah. You're gonna have a heart attack. You're yeah. gonna something's gonna happen. Yeah. You have to. It's about what you're putting in. Yeah. Not what you're always putting out. Right. Right. Without a doubt, man. You know. But um. You know. I. Let's I've spark all... these. Uh. Let's spark yeah, these. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's yours. I punched mine. I don't know how you prefer uh, yours. Hey, but you can you can punch this for me. You want me to punch know. it? Yeah. Right. I punch like the it. punch better because. Me too. Yeah. It's just not as much tobacco coming out. Yeah. And yeah. and. Uh, you know, it's it's like I, smoother I didn't smoke a cigars, bit. man. Dude, you know what's funny is my I, I I really don't, but my sister kind of put me onto this, oh, believe okay. it or not. Okay. Yeah, and the reason her ex boyfriend's father put her onto it, okay, because they're like um they were big like golf people, you know, right, right. So her her ex boyfriend's father, right, you know, he smoked cigars and and drank cognac and stuff yeah. like that and one day i guess she said she was sitting around with him and he was like he wanted to smoke a cigar she was like yeah why not and she picked it up she liked it man women and cigars is so sexy to me i, I love it's it. cool oh yeah yeah i my, think it's my, cool my, my and, wife loves cigars too and that's the and that's the yeah. funny thing yeah. is that she's the one that you know was like hey let me get let's get cigars i said yeah fine i said yeah let's do it let's try it you know i i stopped uh yeah, I was a heavy cigarette smoker and really? this and that. Yeah. Dude, how you were talking about like your your drug use and this and that. I mean, I'm I'm right there, brother. I you know, I used to be So if you notice you notice at the Con Air uh, reunion in twenty fifth Con Air reunion screen which you attended and I'm grateful, yeah. thank you. Oh no, thank you for yeah. inviting me. Yeah. That was awesome. Um, that Conrad who played Viking was sure and we both were smoking cigars. Yeah, I did that's what I that's what I yeah. Because I brought him a cigar. Cause that's all we, me and Conrad did, man, for three or four, almost four months on the set of Con Air, on location wherever we were, and uh, that's amazing. Man. Yeah, and the good, the the really crazy thing is, he was dating, or I don't want to say dating, they were just really good friends. Steve McQueen's daughter, wow, who's not with us anymore, very beautiful uh, lady. Uh, she would visit us wherever sure. we were on location. She would bring like a box of cigars for us. Oh wow! For Conrad, that's amazing. Because Conrad would share the cigars. Wow, that's yeah. amazing that she would do that though. Yeah, that's yeah. like extremely generous. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's how you got into it. Mm. Okay. I was already into cigars. Okay. Because I had my own humidor cigars too. Oh, okay. That I would bring. Okay. I had a travel humidor, and then uh, matter of fact, Emilio Rivera, uh, who is his. Uh, well known now because he stars in oh, Mar- yeah, Mayans, Mayans. Oh yeah. You know and stuff. Yeah. He was smoking these little East LA Probably, hood yeah. cigars, you yeah. know, and didn't know anything but yeah. and Emilio would tell you to this day, how did you get into good cigars? He'll oh. say, Ty Granderson Jones turned me on to oh, no cigar shit. really. That's is. amazing. Yeah. Yeah, um it's ama- yeah, the, the the thing is the reason I'm I'm kinda of surprised that you've kind of been into because like, you know, with somebody that's in the heavy like I'm not saying you were. Yeah, if yeah. I, you know, if you're doing drugs, if I'm doing drugs and this and that and smoking cigarettes, I'm not doing cigars. Right. You know what I mean? And right. I only got into this is because I get the nicotine hit. It's something fun. Yeah, yeah. And you Dude, know, I, I've done it all. You name it. You know, even to this day, I've never been sober a day in my life past what, twelve, thirteen. <laughs> Let me yeah. ask you, Ty. Where yeah. are you from? Um, originally, uh, I you know sometimes I kind of just for mystique pur- purposes. You know, I create. That's another clever and cool way of saying lying. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I, say, I say I was I was born I was born in a bathtub by a midwife in the French quarters of New Orleans, Louisiana. Yeah. And the reason why I say that is because I'm so proud of my Creole heritage. That's why I have the fleur de lis here. Oh yeah. Oh, you know, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. You know, mixed into my dragon. Oh, that's you know, sick. I'm, I'm dragons anything because I'm very East culture, especially you know. With, yeah, I mean. You know, yeah, mm-hmm. no, yeah, I mean, my birth, my birth year is the year of the dragon. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I like to just also say that because I love. Yeah. It. If I always say, if anybody wants to give me anything, any kind of gift for any reason, 
I'm anything dragon. Are you the year of the dragon? You're no, I'm not. But I, you know, I'm the year of the horse, I believe. You know, but you know, if you don't know any better, I'll say yeah, I'm year yeah, of the I dragon mean, because it sounds so fucking cool. Yeah, the only reason <laughs> I I say, I say it because one time I was reading about it and I'm like, mom, my year is the year of the dragon. Right. But it's like such a weird thing. Yeah. Because it's like a limited amount of years, and they gotta like. You know, re it up every fucking century or yeah. something. It's like yeah. a, you know. Yeah. So. But I'm, if you know, all my tats are dragons, man. Okay. You know, okay. this is a dragon actually gripping the, the floor of the leaves. leaves. You know that's, what I mean? And that's that's my, a nice tat. I like thanks, that. thanks. Yeah. My, that's my Creole culture. Sure. You right. know what I mean? No, I understand. And, yeah. and uh, because my great, my great, uh, my great grandfather was from Paris. He's a white dude from Paris. Okay. During no the way. turn of last century, he found himself in New Orleans in the French quarters and married a little Creole woman. And they were the first interracial couple to ever get married in St. Louis Cathedral in Jackson Square in New Orleans at the turn of last century. And he was, no guess what? Way. He was a cigar maker. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Dude, that is so fucking interesting because, like... Interracial couples yeah. was not a yeah. fucking thing, right? Until and, and they like were the first, very recent, right? Well, you used to hide and do it, right? All the time. No, I understand, but that's the but thing, the, and the, especially from the deep south, right? Yeah, like you could get killed for but, something, but, like but that. because even at the turn of last century, we, and I'm talking about early on, you know, like 19. This is my grandmother's right. mother, my late oh, grandmother. Something. You know, we're, we're talking, talking 19 about, something. Yeah, 19 yeah. something. Yeah. It's because he had prestige. He was from Paris. He had money. He was a cigar maker. And and so somehow... But that, that's what's interesting is that he would, he would you know, take in a, a colored woman, right? Yeah. At the time. I mean, right. it's like, it's right. probably not a very common thing, not to right. mention if you did it, you'd have to yeah. be in secret. Yeah. Yeah, I'll show you some photos of uh, my uh, my grandmother when she was a baby in the lap of my great grandfather, you know, and, and great grandmother. Wow, man, you that's know? so crazy. But 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 so I always say I was born, you know, because like, I'm very proud of my culture. You're, on yeah. my on my father's side, on my mother's side, I'm Cuban, okay. so I'm Creole Cuban, which brings me to Tampa, which is where I was okay. actually really born okay, and raised. So you Tampa, were, okay, so you're Florida. You're from Tampa. Yeah, okay, I have family from Tampa. Okay, I love Tampa. Yeah, and my and my grandfather in and the, and the whole Clearwater. Okay, mm -hmm. my my baby brother's in Clearwater. He's a oh. firefighter there. Oh no, sure. Yeah. yeah, but but my um my uh but my great grandfather, my great grandmother, and everybody they migrated from the French quarters to Tampa. Okay. And my great grandfather was a co-founder of Have a Tampa Cigar. Oh. No way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's why that's where your cigar roots come from. I, you know, I guess that's what my 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 yearning for you know for cigars. I yeah. Mean, I mean the fact that you're cute, you you got Cuban in you, and you were raised in Tampa, which is yeah. Florida is a heavy yeah. Cuban population. Yeah, yeah. I used to live in Miami. Okay. So and as a matter of fact, my my a close friend of mine who was actually my boss, ironically enough, at the time too, when I lived in Miami, was uh it was a black dude. He was uh he was Creo. Okay. I mean he was uh can't remember where he was from I know he's I know he spoke French and Creo. Yeah, yeah. Um I, I wanna say he was from the Dominican, but I might be wrong. You know Creoles see there's a difference, you know, you can have Creoles that are from Haitian. Uh Hay ha no, Haiti. he was Hayden. Yeah, yeah, he was, he was Haitian, Haiti yeah. and they speak Creole. Yeah. He was Haitian, you know, it's a yeah. different Creole yeah. from the culture mm. of my co Creole culture. Okay. My Creole culture in America would have, they would have, we would have first, um, what, do you, what do you call it, uh, minority, you know, because we were, you know, French, black, African American, French, African, Spanish. As long as the French is in there with some other like Native American, we were the French, and we came, we were a product of slavery in Louisiana. Sure. Sure. Yeah. You know, no, with the yeah, French. Makes sense. Yeah, you know? with the French, right? And that's part of the history. And yeah. I've dug even into more of my history and found out that on my great grandmother's side, out of the French quarters, out of New Orleans, that one of my great 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 grandfather was a thief and a scoundrel that I actually fought with Jean Lafitte. Okay. You know, which okay. is crazy. He was a pirate. <laughs> he, yeah. Well, see, and that's not that. That's not very shocking because piracy was a big fucking yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah. And even before yeah. America became Amer what it was, yeah. that's the other the part Louisiana of the Louisiana Treaty. Yeah, sure. Oh, I mean, yeah. they were all going down, up and down the coast there, the Gulf. The, they was all inhabited by pirates. Yeah. I mean, if it wasn't for the yeah. fucking British, yeah. really, it, yeah. they, the pirates would have taken right. over right. America. Right, right, really. right. 
And because uh, they ruled the fucking Caribbean. Yeah. And it, it was amazing. I've, I've, I've watched a documentary, actually. Uh, it, it was like a docu series right. on the pirates of right. the fucking 17th century. That's crazy, and man. It was fucking insane. Man. So I never really understood that until um, before I found out and started really digging into the, my ancestry from the Louisiana and, and thing, and found out that I had, you know, ancestors uh, uh, that go all the way back to Jean Lafitte. You sure. know, that was a great, was so he was like great, 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 great grandfather who was. Okay. Who was a, a French and, and a slave, who, who was like a thief and a scoundrel that fought for and with Jean Lafitte. Okay. Right. Jean Lafitte so was was he was like the pirate. pirate. He was okay. the famous pirate in Louisiana. I gotcha. You know, I gotcha. What they called buccaneers back in the day. Okay. And 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 your great 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 grandfather worked for yeah, him. Yeah. They, they yeah well, That's he was, amazing. He was one of the thugs. He was one of the guys. He was one of the yeah. thugs and yeah. pirates that hung out with them. You know. But I yeah, I mean, understood. I guess it's it's either be a pirate or be a slave. Right, right. right. <laughs> I mean, it's like fucking yeah. yeah. But I never really understood that because at some point, I remember when I was in the French quarters in New Orleans, and I was walking through a little area called uh, Pirate Alley. Okay. And the hair rose up on the back of my neck, and I got goosebumps. Mm -hmm. I never understood what that was about. I wouldn't be surprised if some of my ancestors had. Died there or had battles oh, there. Absolutely. I mean, if you, know, you, get, you go, yeah, you, know, you got three, three, four generations of your family, ancestral yeah. family there, you definitely, yeah. you know. But here's the thing. Back, you know, civil here's the war thing, and man. Stuff too. You know, see this finger here? Sure. It's deformed. It started curving okay. many years ago. It happened with this, and I had surgery on it, and I can't straighten it out. Wow. And it's called deputrin contracture. Okay. It's a disease. Oh. Right? Where collagen underneath the skin wraps around the cords and it jerks it so it makes your fingers go like that. Oh, wow. Okay. okay? So you can't straighten up. So the, in America, a lot of the doctors didn't really know what it what I thought it was from all the martial arts and punching and Muay Thai and oh, stuff. Oh, you can't straighten it out. No. Okay, I no, got you. No, that it's the form. I got you. It, right? It's I got called you. the putrid yeah, 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 contracture. Yeah. Okay? It's yeah. a disease, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the collagen is wrapping around cords yeah. and... I understand. Yeah, you know, and, I, I, yeah, I had then, a, I have a family member who's got two fingers like that. Well, let me tell you where that comes from, and I didn't know. I went to see a specialist about five years ago, and they're just starting to get a, ra uh, they're wrapping their heads around this just starting to figure in it medicine out. Mm -hmm. where it came from. Mm -hmm. It mostly affects those that have, um, one hundred percent Celtic DNA. Oh, okay. No so when I go to the specialist, he says, "Tell me something about you." So, well, I'm Creole, Cuban. He says, Creole, let's stop right there. Yeah. It's French. You go, I said, yeah, my great-grandfather was from French. He was French. He was from Paris. Mm -hmm. And they get a hold of it. Your great-grandfather says, ha, huh, so, Mr. Jones, you're a bit of a Viking, huh? Oh, wow. So I go, what are you, what are you, the hell are you talking where about? You Creole or Cuban? Yeah. Where, 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 where are you coming from with this? He goes, DNA is a strange thing. Yeah. You're great. The reason why Kel... The Putin contracture is exclusive to Celtic DNA. Wow. That's he says, 2,000 years ago, the Vikings raped and pillaged all of France. So your great-grandfather carried that DNA and that gene yeah. of the Putin contracture. Yeah. And all wow. these years, centuries later, oh, yeah. it's passed down it's to you, Mr. Down, Jones. Yeah. You got Isn't it. that crazy? It is fucking wild. Man. And I go, oh, it is fucking but, wild. I, but with my crazy ass, I'm thumping her and say, hey. I'm a fucking Viking. <laughs> it is crazy, but if you think about it, it's, you know, 2,000 years ago, it sounds a long time to us, but it's really not. Yeah, I know. You know? And it's like, yeah, you could see how the generationally something like that could come down. It's but, crazy, But huh? it is it is interesting that you can, you, you know, you can you can go back and get your ancestral from, like, the yeah. other side of the world. Yeah. When fucking, like, these people that... They fucking raped and pillaged the entire Europe. Right. And that's what this is. This is all Viking shit, right? Wow, here. that's crazy, man. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? And I'm, I'm, I was born in Europe, actually. I'm, I'm, was born in Romania. Okay. And but my, my first language is Hungarian. Oh, really? So my, yeah, my family were Hungarian and Russian too. My great grandfather migrated from Russia. Wow. After you know the World War. Two uh, blonde Russians left. They were like, "Fuck these assholes!" Right, right. right. So, 
<laughs> the Russians that some of them went and they went everywhere, but Romania was where my great grandfather la- landed. And yeah. So I'm Russian and Romanian, but I'm all fucking northern, scanning everything, man. You're right. Wow. So, that's crazy, man. So we're all. So that's, we're, we're we're Viking brothers. Everybody, man. everybody, everybody's connected, <laughs> right, man. Right. Right. Everybody's right, fucking right, connected, right, you know. And right. that's that's the wild thing about you know. Uh, I was uh, I recently started getting into comedy a little bit, and I wrote this bit about um, you know. Uh, I could probably claim that I'm African, right? Because well, at well, one well, time, well, right? most white people can, because well, sure. that's that's where that, that was the origin, exactly of of humanity. Of humanity, humans come from Africa. Right, Africa. We started in Africa, right, so your right. lineage, if yeah, you so, go back sixty thousand yeah. years, so all this, all this, know? all this segregation and racism and shit, it makes no sense whatsoever. Oh, dude, it's com- the 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 sad part is about. A lot of our society is that it's man-made. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that's the, you know as 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 great of like advancements as we have had made. You know, unfortunately, we're you know we still have. You know, when you're just looking at the defect yeah. of being a human being. Yeah. You yeah. know, we're too yeah. smart for our own kind. Right. Well, our what happens good. is the poly- it, 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 it's it's the simplicity of dividing and conquering. Mm. For absolutely so, so divide can, and conquer, hundred percent divide and conquer, and keep us yeah. going against squabbling while they're laughing all the way to the bank. Yeah, well, they can do whatever they want. You know what I mean? When you divide people, you know, effectively, yeah, you can do whatever you want. Right. And they they will continue to fight right, each other. Right. 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 Because you're essentially you have one group that's on you. They believe in what you're doing. Yeah. And you have the other side that's like, yeah. what the fuck are these assholes? Right. 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 So those people are always gonna fight. You yeah, know, they yeah. think they're fighting on diff- about different reasons. You know, as the reasons pile up. Yeah. You know, they think. But essentially, you're just fighting on who's on my side or who's yeah. not. That's yeah. really all. Like, yes. And we all, we really all should be on each other's side. You know? Well, yeah, then that's the thing is that, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're all fucking one. Yeah. And it's, you have to think about it, it's civilization, it's the people against the fucking government. Yeah. And, yeah. but unfortunately, yeah. you can't, you know, just how, just the same way where you can't have one president that's going to make everybody happy. Right. You're not gonna have yeah. one person to stand up and be like, "Hey, we're together. for everybody." Yeah, you know we're I mean? for everybody, and yeah. yeah we're- I mean, I mean, and then they just do. I mean, it's just, and at this particular this time right now, man. I mean, a lot of things I don't agree. You know, like I'm not all the way left and I'm not all the way right. I'm really kind of one of those guys in the center. You're you like know, independent. I, yeah, yeah, and uh, pretty much in some ways, although officially I'm a Democrat. You know what I mean? Well, but, you're also but, part of Hollywood, so yeah, you, yeah. you have an obligation. Right, right. And yeah. but I'm in the center. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. I think the problem is being all the way left and then all the way right. You know what I mean? Um, a lot of people would look at me and initially probably assume that I'm really far left and I'm not, you know, and you look at me and you know I ain't far right. right. <laughs> you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I mean You know what I mean? But it's like little yeah. things, man. I don't want to tell women to do with their bodies, you know. I don't want to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, it's get, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's tricky. It's it's tricky in the sense that like you know, it it, it just really just goes back to the whole idea of dividing. Yeah. You know, there are yeah. so many issues and points that come up within politics that they they force yeah. onto the people. Yeah. Yeah. And then now their people are nitpicking. Yeah. At things here and there and this yeah. and that. It, you know, and that's the thing. Like when you have a discussion with somebody, you know, the first thing that they're going to be like, "Oh, which way yeah, do you lean?" Yeah. Right. And right, that's going right, to set the right, tone right, automatically. Right. But here's and the that's thing. The problem. Here's the thing. Democracy really works. You know, it's messy, it's ugly, but there's the only option. The only other option to democracy, which if we're not careful, careful in the next one or two election cycles. We're going to have an authoritarian government, which will end up like Russia. You know, I, I would argue. You know, I would argue that we've we've are, we're kind of already there. You know, yeah. because of the fact of the last two years, yeah, yeah. have just been so like, yeah. what in the fuck is? I going mean, for on? the first time, the transfer of power almost didn't happen. I mean, yeah, and I mean, if you think, if you look on the last, you know, four, five, six offices, yeah. 
it's almost the same. Yeah. Like you, you have a few things here and there that change from one office to the next. But yeah. at the end of the day, yeah. we were, dude, we just came out of war for right. the last 20 fucking years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And how yeah. many presidents have we had in the last 20 years? What, three or four? Something right. Something like that? Right. So, you know, but the thing is like, I don't know, man. It's, yeah. it's, it, you know, the other thing, the other point to make about that is, you know, I think we we have this perception of today. I mean, you've lived a lot longer than me. Yeah. But are we gonna get into that? Area? But, no, no. But, no, I mean, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make the point that, yeah. like, you know, we have this perception of today, like, dude, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. What's going on with our world, right? But if you look historically, every decade yeah. has its own fucking problems. Yeah. But but I've never you seen know? it. You know, I've seen it through the 60s, 70s, mm, right. 80s, 90s. Here right. we are. Sure. It has never been this bad. Even my parents and their parents, even my great-grandfather that we were just talking about earlier, have never seen a convergence of where we've had... We basically, America was so fed up and confused and divided that they elect, elected a con artist practically... You know, which has opened it up now where a lot of at least 45, 46 percent of America aren't using their brains and their compassion and they're afraid. You know, they're, they're, they're believing things, in my humble opinion, yes, all, there's this old saying, man, that the only thing worse than a politician is a child molester. <laughs> I've never heard that one, but that's that's a, a good one. Up saying. That's a good one. That's a good one. It's not quite that bad. Okay. And all I politicians and all politicians and I grew up in politics. My father, my late dad, um, marched with Martin Luther King. Why? He was a well-known political activist under the administration of two different governors for the state of Florida. Wow. He brought home people for dinner. Like Julian Bond, Barbara Jordan, Shirley Chisholm, who was really the first woman, not Hillary, the first who was African American. She was the first woman to run for president of the United States of America. My father. At gave what her. time? What this year? was in the seventies. Shirley wow. Chisholm. Okay. Okay. Look it up. It's history. Shirley Chisholm was the first woman to to run for president. To run for president of the United States of America. Wow! In the seventies, that's not that long ago. Mm -mm. That's not that long. Ago. That's and my idea. father gave her a cocktail fundraising party at the house. So I grew up in politics. Yeah, your father. It sounds like your father was pretty successful. My my yeah. father was ultra successful, man. You know. Yeah. So I grew up in politics. My first cousin, my father's sister's son, right now is a federal judge in the state of Florida who was Jeez. appointed by Bill Clinton. Oh Jesus. So I grew up around politics. My father took me to meet, and I'm gonna really date myself here. That's huh. fine. You know, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> You know, it's how I look, baby. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I'm a vampire, actually. No, I'm just <laughs> But anyway, um, my father took me to meet JFK and shake his hand a week before he was assassinated in Dallas. He was in Tampa, Florida. And all of the well-known local politicians or political activists like my father were invited to come and bring their family out to meet JFK. As a little kid, I shook JFK's hand. Wow. A week before he was assassinated. In Tampa, Florida, because when he left Tampa, he went straight to Dallas. That's fucking insane, man. So when JFK was assassinated, bro, that was a big... everybody was fucked up over it. Oh, yeah. But I was especially fucked up. How old were you? <laughs> I was like, Seven. Oh, okay, oh, you were like super seven, young. Eight, eight, super young. Seven, eight, you were super young, but eight, old eight, enough to remember. Old, yeah. yeah, you were old enough to remember, because that's how old I was when I came to the States. Yeah. Wherefore, my father, at my birthday party, my 10th birthday party, invitations were all, all already out to families. We had to try to call as many to say, don't show up at our house. We have to leave our house and go to a motel because the KKK had threatened to blow up our house. Wow. I couldn't go out of the yard in Florida. They would drive trucks, the KKK, up and down the street in front of our house. Sure. 
When I was in college in the 70s, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On my way back up to Florida State University and Florida A&M University after the weekend of spring break, we had to pass through a little town called Perry, Florida. There was a big picnic and a hoorah going on that particular moment, that day, that hour we drove through on the way back to college. Now look, and there's a black man hanging from a tree. I saw that as a kid. In, in 1970? In, this, in, um, in 1974. 70, 75 when I went in. 75, 76. Oh, my God, man. Yeah. Wow, I'm really sorry that that, 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 that happened to you. And I wrote a poem about it. You know, um, I, just, I, was, I, was published, so crazy. I was published as a poet very early on. I was a very angry young man, sure. um, young black man. Right. A man of color, Creole, Cuban. Um, there are two individuals that had taken me in college under their wings, and both were controversial. One was Gil Scott Heron. He was a big uh, poet and recording artist. You can look him up, Gil. If you've ever heard a song, see that black boy over there running sad, his old man in the bottle. Yeah. You know, it's a crime yeah. you can get. I'm from the north. He, man. Yeah, yeah. He taught yeah. me how to write. Okay. He was a writer, he's a poet. Okay. The other guy on the right that took me under his wing was one of the founders, co-founders of the Black Panthers called Sto mm -hmm. uh, Stokely Carmichael. Changed his name to Kwame Touré. Wow. And so they restructured the Black Panthers into a group called the All African uh, American uh, Revolutionary Party. Okay. And I was one of the first recruited. Wow. Had this fro. I was angry and I was writing and I was yeah. published early on. Yeah. You so must I, have been, what, 20, 18, something like that? 21, 22. Yeah. Remember, I... Yeah, young. Yeah, I was... Ready. I, was, I spent ready, almost yeah. two years, to, you know, avoiding death row in prison. Yeah, um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Conti continue with where you're going, because this is... I was going to get into kind of like your background, kind of like how you, what you went through, and then how you ended up getting into film. Yeah. You know? Uh, so you became part of this group, the American, That was in college, post-prison. in college. Sure. Oh, Post prison. This was post prison. Yeah, man. How old were you when you went to prison? Nineteen. Legal. Do you do you Graduate. mind if I ask why you went to prison for? No. Um, the drug trade. Okay. And um, you know some stuff I can't even to this day. Sure. I have in a sponge record. Okay. I talked about my father and his connections early. My my family, how they oh, were politically yeah, connected. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the reasons, you know, you usually hear the stories about wealthy white boys who got off. Well, I'm one of those. We weren't wealthy, wealthy. Sure. But my family was, on my father's side, was, um, we were upper middle class Creole, Catholic Creoles. Sure. You know, yeah. two Cadillacs in the driveway. Yeah. Nice three bedroom house. Yeah, that's that's fairly yeah mid mid class. Is that upper middle uh, upper middle upper class. middle class? Yeah, definitely. You know, but here's the thing. I always ask myself, how did I find myself on that road? And it comes down to initially before my father became very successful. I was raised by my mother's side of the family. Yeah. My mother got pregnant coming out of high school with me. wasn't Didn't really want me, you know. And wasn't you know the, the stories, so the letters, and all that young. And my father was such a player. He was young. He was a sergeant in the Korean War. Wow. Came out of the war. Your father. And my dad. And so he was a pretty hard dude. Hard, but not. Yeah. But but yeah, yeah, you know, just yeah. he was a cool dude. He was yeah. my father was. He, he was a cool guy. motherfucker. Yeah. You wouldn't like him, but he was yeah. smart. People liked him. He know how he got along with everybody. White, black, you know, he yeah. was, you know. So he, he was a good dude all the time. He was around. well known in, in Tampa and the South Coast. He bought sure. the mobsters, the Italians, everybody knew him. His yeah. nickname was Gooseby. Okay. okay. You know, oh, so he was friends with mobsters. Yes. From Miami. Yeah, in Tampa. In Tampa, Because no. okay. okay. most of the mobsters in Florida come from New York. Sure, right. where they want to raise yeah. their families. And I ended up going to high school with most of them, okay. which was part of the equation for me, too, in high okay. school. Okay. You know, I went to high school with Santo Traficantes, um, 
who Santo Traficante was known to be a Chicago mobster who had okay. home in Tampa. Okay. You know, who allegedly had JFK assassinated. Oh, Jesus. You know, so I went to yeah. this all white high school because I was a product of busing. You know? Product of busing? Yeah. Back in the 70s in high school, you had to integrate high schools. And they okay. came up with the idea of doing that by busing you from across the neighborhoods, blacks going into the white neighborhoods, whites going to black. You know. It was, and, and this was regardless of, of, of like social status? What, what do you mean? Yeah. The whole busing thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was about okay. segregation. Okay. You got to remember, up until uh, 1960, whatever, I couldn't vote. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I'm a child. I'm a product of, I had to drink from the colored only fountain. I had to go to the only yeah, colored, that was still, yeah. colored restaurants. Yeah. Only restaurants. Yeah. Yeah, because JF... Uh, uh, Martin Luther was in 63, right? He was in the 60s, right? Yes. Yeah, so well, that was okay. still ve that stuff is still very recent. We couldn't vote. Yeah. Black folk can't vote. And that's why I vote, remind the yeah. black community today when you want to jump down on all white people and put an error. Remember, brother, you want to say, no, 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 bro. Thank God they are good white people. They are good human beings. Yeah. Who do you think passed laws for us to vote? It wasn't us. We couldn't vote. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting because uh, I just saw Will Smith is coming out with a new movie. Emancipation. Yeah. And, you know, I was looking at the trailer and I'm like, this looks fucking sick. Yeah. You know, and the big, the you know, uh, focus of that movie looks like, you know, he, the, the guy he's playing, his whole thing is to go north to yeah. be a part of Lincoln's army. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, yeah, Lincoln... Abraham Lincoln was the one that was like, yeah, put the foot forward to be like the Emancipation hey, Pro Proclamation. Yeah, you know, and when folk don't understand how we so still jacked up about it, you mentioned early, and then we'll get back to how I ended up, what my road was, to my path, and how I got there, you know. But you mentioned how two thousand years is not long ago. Sure, right, yeah. yeah. Everybody, you, you, and I both know someone who is. Or has a friend who has a family member is that's close to a hundred and not a hundred years old and living in their nineties. Okay, so we're talking about maybe one generation away from slavery. Oh yeah, I mean. Okay, so yeah. slavery. See, we get confused. You know why? Cell phones. Yeah. Technology. It's like on a bullet train. Oh. Yeah. So we think that technology gives us a false sense of. We've been around for 3,000 years. Slavery was 3,000. No, dude. No. So, and that's why we're so, even amongst black folk, our own, hating each other. We have the Lily, the Willie Lynch doctrine. Willie Lynch never existed, but there was a doctrine put together by slave owners called the Willie Lynch doctrine, which was rules and instructions on how to fuck up their slaves mentality to the point that they would fight and be crabs in a barrel with each other. A divide and conquer. Yeah. Each other. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Crips in the bloods. Well you name it. I can go down the checklist how why Republicans and Democrats. You know, you know, but you but know. it's mostly about how black people are cutting each other's throats and not sure. coming together like the Jewish communities. Right. Or something. Right. You know what I mean? Right. You know. No, absolutely. But but back to my path. Um, yeah, so let's go back to so you were twenty one and you were heading up north, you said? That was uh, almost like twenty two. That was nineteen twenty. 21, and 21, almost post 22. Post-prison. How long did you spend in prison? Uh, uh, a little bit, maybe a month or two, uh, two years. You okay. Know, where okay. we were fighting the uh, courts. About 20 months you know, or something. That, uh, we were fighting death row and all of these kinds of things. And, How did and you get off of death row? I can't really get in, in, okay. into that well, too you much. Were, okay, but, well, but, I mean, but, but it was but what I had done. It comes down to this. What I had done... You know, it's like you can almost get off today on black on black crime, easy, even today. Mm -hmm. Let me put it: the the things that I had done, if I had harmed anybody that was not Latin or not black, 
maybe I wouldn't be here to tell this story. It sure. wouldn't be so easy. But we had a case that was, you know, it was self-defense. Okay. Not really. Okay. In terms of the things of when I, that I got shot, you know, and all of these things. Um, but my family pulled strings, man. I was going to say. And we kept it out of the papers. Yeah. We kept it out and kept it under the table. We kept it out of what we called in Tampa, Florida, the Florida Sentinel, which everybody knows everybody. You know, there was a lot going on. I had a, a late uncle who was very connected that actually put my father on and uh, lifted him. Uh, we lost him. His name was Andre White. If it had not been for Andre White and my dad, I wouldn't be able to tell the story today. And, and and I can't get into details, you know. No, sure. I mean, just just off the simple fact that your family was politically connected it yeah. probably says enough. Yeah, and I didn't really do – I wasn't going around robbing innocent people or harming innocent people or it was di- – but it was the drug trade, bro. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. It was contraband. Was a big fucking thing. Yeah, yeah. My thing was – my father kicked me out of the house at 16. Okay. Um, but see, let's go all the way back. You see, before my father got custody of me around about six years old. Your parents split up? Well, they never got – they got married okay. because, but they were never together. Mm-hmm. Back then, when I was born, you get a woman pregnant, you ain't married, you go to jail. Wow. Especially she's coming out of high school like my mother was. Yeah. Okay? So they married to keep my dad out of jail, but they were never together. Wow. That's the story that I know. Okay. okay? okay. Uh, but I lived pretty much in the projects with my mother's family. She gave me up. Wow. She couldn't really... And her first cousin was like a father figure to me. Wow. He was a barber, but he was also a numbers runner. So around about five years old, man, I'm hanging out at the barber shop, and he's telling me to go down that street in the Black Hood, which was vibrant at the time and beautiful and thriving. Urban renewal came and got rid of all of that. Black people had their own business and communities. It was like Harlem everywhere in every major cities and Tampa as well. So I'm going in the back of bars at five years old, man, collecting cash for him in a little brown belly Uh bag and bringing him. So I'd already had that little gangster sort of mentality. Yeah. You know? But uh, my father got custody of me. My programming was already different. And ever since the little kid, when my father got custody of me, when he was doing well, Never saw my mother again and my fa- her side of the family again until I was old enough to do it on my own. Um, and my my father was trying to drill sergeant me into being the kid that he always wanted to be, and I was always rebelling. I would take razor blades out of his ba- out of the bathroom that he was shaved with and go through the house ripping up furniture with razor blades. I was bad. I was like rebelling. This didn't really get any better. And then one day at 16 years old, uh, my, you know, my father used to really punish me. He used to get belts and smack, you know, the kind of things that fathers did to their sons back then that you go to jail for today. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, shit, man, I'm 34, and I'll tell you right now, man, I come from a time where, you know, you, the fucking school teacher would smack the shit out yeah, of you. Yeah, and they can't do that anymore. Yeah, no, I mean, and yeah. we're talking we're talking Europe, yeah. in Eastern Europe in, right. in okay. the 90s. Okay, you know? well, so, here, you know, my dad would drop my drawers and take a belt, you know, whatever. Yeah, and they'll do that in school yeah, in the 90s, yeah, yeah, too, yeah, you know, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got my ass whooped growing up as well. Yeah. Yeah, so I know so, what you're talking so about. So here my dad is, I'm 16 now, and... And we're standing in the kitchen. I remember yesterday, and he started putting me up against the wall. Uh, and I'm like, this ain't going to happen again, Pop. And I right. rebelled and put my hands on him. And he, he broke down and cried. And he said, boy, put your hands like a lot of black fathers do with sons. You know, you put your hands on me again, boy, I'm going to kill you. Get out of my house. Right. So I had to leave. And I didn't know what to do. So I quit high school and went to t- Thailand. Because I've been fighting Muay Thai since I was about eight, nine years old. Okay. And it, it ran into it at the boys club and became like city champ. Like in high school, I was state wrestling and conference champ. So in high school, I quit and called myself. I'm going to come there. And I thought I was going to go to Bangkok and just fight and be this big guy. And got my ass handed to me and started doing drugs and shit. And got sick on the food, came back, finished high school. As I was finishing high school, I was already pretty twisted. How am I going to do this and survive? 
And I found my way into uh, my junior and senior year, taking weekends and a weekday skip school and connected to a group of guys and going down to Miami and bringing contraband back to Tampa and then taking it to Tallahassee and across lines into Atlanta and then coming back and going to high school and all the time I was like wrestling champ and Pui Thai champ and but the the brothers in the projects loved me the, the little white boys and white girls in the really wealthy neighborhoods loved me you know because I grew up in that neighborhood coming to high school and then I'm doing this uh I'm doing this uh you know I'm leaving student government man I'm first black vice president of student government it's always I was you were doing what di I was diabolical man yeah. doing all this stuff yeah. you know I had my own apartment in the senior year and you know in high school you know and nobody really knew this nobody I'm not telling everybody you know boom you know outside of that once my dad kicked me out of the house you know I'm still showing up in school until when I quit and then when I came back nobody really asked or really even paid so attention you, yeah you grew up fairly fast yeah and you have to do it on your own. Right. So I ended up doing some really horrible things because I was a guy that my group of guys would call to get some to get some shit handled. Wow. You know, it was very violent. Yeah. Um, and I never had the guilt gene. And I was baptized Catholic that, you know, I could put you on your knees and, and, and take you out and say ten Hail Marys and uh, I'm okay. Yeah. You know, I don't look at that. That's not my mentality today. Sure. You know what I mean? But it was like me or them because that's the things I was getting into, you know, which I didn't realize I was getting into and I was a knucklehead. And the other equation is that being a small guy and a small kid, I was always being bullied. Yeah. And I remember in eighth grade, the biggest bully in junior high school stepped up to me. I guess that day it was my turn. And uh, he embarrassed me in the cafeteria and, and, and slapped me and hit me and all that. And I went back to my last class, which was shop. I knew the door was unlocked and opened and came back with a hammer. And that was the end of that. Wow. Was I got, this kid white? I, uh, no, big, right. big black dude. Big black dude. Big black dude, man. You know, even though it was integrated, you know, and he was like the football big fullback. It was just look at one of those kids that was born with muscles. <laughs> he was a football kid. Yeah, yeah. Was he was he popular? Yeah, yeah, that too. But the biggest bully in the so business. so you went and you took a hammer to this kid. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, and then what happened? And then you? and then I got I got um, he was fine. Uh, you know, ended up fine. You know, so you beat I, you just beat him. I up. just knocked him out. Okay. You know, one boom boom, and then I got in front of everybody. Uh, yeah, and then I got expelled. Yeah, and then I come back. And then all of a sudden, all the little kids are walking up to me going, I'm like some hero. And they're coming up to me about other bullies. And I was like, yeah, okay, I'll take care of that bully, oh, but, so, give, um, but give me your lunch money. Yeah. And let, back then, lunch money was like 40 cents or 40, whatever, <laughs> you know, something, whatever. And then I would take care of the bullies and I've got to be this guy. And then it wasn't the end of the big bully that I had knocked out with the hammer. He comes back to me one day and says, my little cousin is going to wait for you after school and beat you up for that shit you did to me last, you know, six months ago or last, whatever. I said, okay. He did, and, and it didn't happen. The next day, I knew that it's it, some of the, the next day after school, I'm walking home and there is little cousin is who's just as big as him, not little, just younger. But he didn't see the pair of brass knuckles that I had in my pocket. And that was the end of that. Yeah, you were already experienced at this point. Mm -hmm. You knew what, you know, you weren't afraid of somebody. I wasn't going to be taking advantage of a bully anymore. Yeah. So you take the bully equation with father kicking me out of the house. And then before then, very early on, you know, with my, my mother's cousin, who was like a father figure to me, was a barber and a numbers runner. You take all of those things and put them together by the time you're 16 and then you're trying to survive coming out of high school. What I'm going to do, you don't, you really don't give a shit. I'm going to survive and I'm going to be as diabolical and clever as I can because I'm, you know, I, I have a 4.0 in high school. Wow. All of that. I took care of everything. I did everything right. But I'm also living like an undercover kind of life vibe 
with some of the other guys that are going to high school who are the mobster's sons. And next thing you know, but here's the thing. I always wanted to be an actor because I grew up, my father loved movies. My grandfather loved movies, and my grandfather worked for Cap Calloway. So we had sort of a, pol a politician and showbiz family in music and in politics. My grandfather worked for Cap Calloway. My one uncle managed Marvin Gaye and James Brown. My other uncles okay. were jazz greats like Cannonball and Nat Adderley. So I grew up around all these famous people, famous politicians. So fame was never a big deal. You know? Yeah. So, but I was a film buff since I was, my father got custody of me. Okay. We would always watch movies and my grandfather would babysit me and we'd watch Japanese cinema, Chinese cinema, all the, what is Turner Classic Movies today, you know, the James Cagney movies and Andre Bogart. And yeah, was I was like, gonna ask, what's your what's your earliest memory of like movies that like ins like m inspire you to be like that's what I want to do? White Heat with James Cagney, uh, the Roaring Twenties with Cagney and Bogart. Oh my God! You know Casablanca. Uh, yeah, Casablanca. Huh. You know, uh, Marlon Brando and On the Waterfront. Okay, so you mentioned Marlon, uh, Marilyn Monroe, James Dean. These are, these were the people you were watching. Yeah. Yeah, and and then here's the thing. All those years later, before I even get to that, so I'm out on parole. I'm in okay. Tampa. Okay. I get a job working at this insurance company as part of the whole thing. A lot of folks don't even know. Even my daughter's mother didn't even know. My high school sweet yeah. college didn't know shit. That I just didn't tell it. You know. Yeah. So I'm I'm in my apartment. With a little black and white TV with a clothes hanger in for an antenna. And there was a a special presentation of a the Negro Ensemble Theater's showing, screening of a very, very popular black play called Ceremonies in Dark Old Men. Starring, who's a very popular actor to this day, who's working his ass off now, who's like almost 80. Starring Glenn Turman and the great Robert Hooks. These were guys that I looked up to. And I'm watching this, and it hit me like a brick that, Ty, all this shit you've been through, all this journey, what have you ever wanted to do since you were seven years old? Be an actor. Before I went to prison, I had already been accepted to college. Before you went to prison? Yeah. Okay. So you went to college after prison? Yeah. I put myself through college. Wow. That and financial aid. Wow. But I was going to major in political science, something that I knew. Okay. So right? did you originally think you were going to get into politics? Yeah, I figured, you know, it's what I knew. I grew up with it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So one day, I'm at Florida State University, and I'm walking, Florida a &M University, and I'm walking by a bulletin board, by the theater department. And there's a, an audition for a very popular play that was on Broadway here at the college wow. called, called The River Niger. Wow. I went out and auditioned for it. I got the role and I was hit. I was a hit in the play on campus. Wow. I changed my major from political science to theater. Kept my minor, which was broadcast journalism. Because one of the ways I was putting myself through college was I worked as a disc jockey on the college's radio station. Oh. W A N M. Okay, you were DJ. Yeah, my thing used to be we may be on the left side of your dial, but you can bet we are the right station. Oh, wow. T. Grandison Jones on the radio. Oh, North wow. Florida's only naked DJ. <laughs> ah, you can't see, can you? You know. That. <laughs> yeah, you got a great radio voice. Yeah, you know. Yeah. No, that's great. So you were doing that to get through college. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And went back to, you know, a little, selling a little weed. and. Okay, so you were doing what you had to do, but th essentially in college, right. you already had, that's when you got serious about getting into, becoming yeah. an actor. That's why so I you said, were yeah. 21, yeah, 22. Because I remember what I always, because I was in the drama club when I was in high school doing plays. I did plays when I was in elementary school. So when did you get your first break and you knew, like, this is where you're heading? Well... It's when Lee Strasberg came down to Florida State University. 
Okay. To do that a was, work. To okay. Do, oh, that was your Juilliard. Yeah. To, to do a, uh, you know, Lee Strasberg, one of the greatest uh, acting teachers that's, in the that's, world. Yeah, that's a that's a familiar name. I don't know anything about Lee Strasberg. He's though. the mentor of Marlon Brando, Marlon Monroe, okay. James okay. Dean. Okay. He's back in the day. Yeah. No, he he's he's, he's the. He's you, the you, you've seen him in Godfather Two playing okay. Al Pacino's Hyman Roth. He was okay. the it's the actor studio. This is the greatest okay. acting institute in the world. Mm. Yeah, Juilliard, yeah. No, no, this is not Juilliard. Oh, you're talking about the guy. This is the actor's studio. Okay. Juilliard was existing, like, okay. you know, yeah. you know and, then, and, and then there was the actor's studio. The actor's studio, that was his. Which is where Brando and Monroe okay. and all of these guys were. Okay. So So he comes down, he sees you. He comes down to Florida State University yeah. to do a workshop. Yeah. I don't know who this guy is. Right. I don't know much about theater or anything. I always wanted to be in film. It's not like today. You can go to film school or film acting school. All it was was theater. So this guy comes down to do a workshop, and he brings Eli Wallach with him, Kevin McCarthy, his daughter Susan Strasberg, and a black guy named Earl Heitman, who was a really big Shakespearean actor in New York. Well, I didn't know any of these guys. I knew Eli Wallach and Kevin McCarthy because Eli Wallach was one of the guys that played in one of my favorite westerns with Clint Eastwood called The Good, Bad, and the Ugly. Oh, yeah, okay. Blondie! People know that, yeah. Blondie, you know. Okay. You know, and then Kevin McCarthy was in the original The Body Snatchers okay. horror film. Yeah. So I didn't know that these guys come from theater. I didn't know shit about sure. theater and blah, blah, blah. And so we end up doing all these little workshops with Strasburg and the group theater. I mean, and Harold Clerman had come down and founded the group theater. These were guys that were connected to Ilya Kazan, who, who took the, the, those theater guys, uh, Brando and, and, and uh, James Dean, and they, they made movies like East of Eden and, wow. and, 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 and Streetcar and all of these Rebel things. Without a car. Rebel Without the Cars. Rebel Without a Cars. You know, there was like theater that was, that was going in the film because they had the clout to do it. It was different. Well, way before me. You know oh, what I mean? But oh, I'm yeah. watching them as a kid, right? right. So... So he invites you to New York? So, no, it happened like this. Okay. One day, at the end of that day of those workshops, I'm walking across campus. I think it was spring. The wind was blowing. The leaves were falling. My fro was blowing in the wind. Sure. <laughs> uh-huh. And there was Lee Strasberg. Now, you, you gotta remember, man, I don't know Lee Strasberg. Actually, none of this heavyweight sure. stuff. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a punk. I'm yeah. cocky. You're angry. I'm angry. You know, I'm in college, and there he is in front of the Fine Arts Building at Florida State University with his little wireframe glasses on and a suitcase. To this day, I imagine he's waiting for a cab to take him back to the airport. Everybody else would come with him, you know. So I walk right up to him, man, and this is one of the greatest acting teachers in history in the world. Brando's Dean. I don't know this shit. Later on, you find, you know. So sometimes familiarity can can freeze you up, and, you know, when you don't know people. So I walked up to him, man, and I literally poked him in his chest. I go, hey, I was good today in those workshops, huh? Oh. I go, look, when I graduate, I'm going to come to New York, and I'm going to see you. And he steps back. He smiles very little guy like me, maybe an inch tall, and he looks at me, and he goes, you do that, young man. I remember it like yesterday. Wow. I graduated about a year later. I packed my bags. I head to New York. I'm in New York. I find the actor's studio. He had a little office or something there. He was never there that much anymore. It wasn't to, yeah, Every now and then he'd come do a special. One day he shows up and does a special class. And I go, hey, remember me? And he goes, I don't think he quite did, but blah. And he invited me in to do... Uh, what year was this? Seventy nine. Wow, that's crazy, dude. I wasn't even born. Seventy nine. I was born. I was born ten years later. Yeah, seventy nine. I was born in eighty eight, but so so. So you're in New York. And so so anyway, Alan Schneider, who's one of the greatest Broadway directors ever, who's running the acting program at Juilliard, sure. is snooping around the actor studio because okay. it's all part of the whole. It's in New York, yeah. you know, act. Yeah. And he sees me do something, and he invites me. Says, "Kid, 
Not a little guy, Jewish guy. Oh yeah. <laughs> he says, "Kid used to wear a little Greek fit, Greek yeah. fisherman cap." Yeah. He says, "Kid, I like it." He said, "I want to do a ethnic version workshop of waiting for Godot." I don't know shit. I'm like, waiting for who, motherfucker? I say that. <laughs> yeah, sure. He goes, Samuel Beckett, because he introduced that playwright Samuel Beckett to America. Okay. This is big shit. Sure. I don't know. Right. So in the middle of starting those workshops of putting that story, that play in the Civil War, which was a brilliant idea, he gets an offer to leave Julian. I talked about this earlier, to leave Juilliard, where he was over the acting program, to go out to the University of California, San Diego and develop a Master's of Fine Arts in directing program, which they did not have. So he says, Kid, I'm leaving. We got to put this uh, workshop on a hall, but how would you like to get your Master's degree in acting? And he says, in California, I'm thinking, when the man and I heard California, I'm thinking movies, man. Right. I'm thinking, I'm like, yeah, how do I do? He said, well, you missed the auditions for the program here in New York. You got to fly to New York and audition. I didn't have to a dime. To San Diego. Yeah, no, you to, to audition for the MFA program in acting for the University of California, San Diego. Okay. Because they went around the country right. auditioning the hottest, brightest young actors for the program, which was still a new program. Yeah. Which at the time, Up and Coming was one of the third most greatest acting programs in the world. Wow. So I fly to Chicago. I didn't have the money. He helped me fly and I auditioned for the chairman, Michael Addison, at the Goodman Theater for the MFA program in acting at University of California, San Diego. Who is a friend of mine. He's retired, but he's on Facebook, Michael Addison. I, my, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Michael Addison. Wow. I auditioned, I did my monologues for him. By the time I landed back in New York, at Schneider, I blame you, they had accepted you, kid. Before I even, on my recommendation. Full fellowship, which I didn't have to pay for any of full. Wow. So then I go back down to Tampa, I leave New York, and I'm waiting before it's time for me to go out to California, and I'm scared to death because that's the further I've ever been anywhere. California from yeah. Florida, I'm scared yeah. to death, man. <laughs> You know, in my whole journey where, you know, and I'm, and oh, you got to keep in mind, I'm hiding all of this convict stuff. Yeah, nobody, nobody knows, knows anything about Anything you. about any of this. Okay. I just started talking about this about 10 years ago. So out of shame. Tell, oh, no, yeah, actually I started talking about it about the time, a little bit after I did Con Air. Because it was Danny Trejo and Emilio Rivera and, that had convinced me out, out of conversation because we had similar stories that it's, it's your journey, bro. Don't be ashamed of it's your well, journey. And, and you come from a different time, too, you know. it was I think people's reputations were more under the microscope because, you know, as soon as people got a word of anything that you were doing or not, right. you know, information didn't travel like that at right. that time. So right. when someone heard something about you, that shit would carry. Right. Right? Like, right. nobody could verify nor deny that. Right. Right. So people were probably more like, you know, you probably had more pressure to, to like, yeah. protect your reputation. And, and just, I wanted to be a stand-up person in society, and I wanted to be the actor I always wanted to be. I remember when I was a kid. So anyway, I ended up at University of California, San Diego, doing Shakespeare. Several of my clients said, well, certainly they run from this dude. My master fiend is at my elbow, you know, just in learning and getting rid of my southern That's accent. Amazing, yeah. My southern accent. Did you have a heavy accent? Oh, I had a heavy southern accent. Yeah, oh. uh, that hood over there, you know, I do, and I'm doing it. I, you can't tell me nothing, you know. <laughs> yeah. How did you get over that? My master's degree. Okay. Voice, okay. diction, New York, doing theater along the way. It just loses. You don't want to. I was taught you don't ever want to lose it or not get back because you may have to use it at some point. You know what I mean? It's like I hear a lot of the guys I grew up with and everybody, they, my brother, my family, they all, they, they, they all still, they Florida boys, you know, man. and it cracks me yeah. up, man, you know what I mean? Yeah, I and mean, then when I find myself at home with them, next thing you know, I'm going, huh, that, that's their, damn, not, man. 
<laughs> yeah, no, for sure. It's kind yeah, of you a, know, it's, it's, kind it's of weird, fun, man. That's what I want to ask you. Like, w- what point did you think to yourself, I have to change? Did you go through a transitioning period? I never thought about changing. Okay. It was just an innate. It's kind of like. Or like I've always, God, God has blessed me. First of all, God has so blessed me and had me because I know I'm here to bear witness, dude. And I pray every day for forgiveness, and 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 I pray for you, and I pray for, you know. But one of my gifts is that I innately, without consciously doing it, reinvent myself. That's why I can be this old dude sitting up here, and I look at you until I look in the mirror and feel like maybe I'm part of your generation because I'm kind of cloning where you are right now and keeping up. To me, keeping up is very important. It's like and adapting. Uh, huh? It's like adapting. Yeah. Adapting and, and, and evolve is a better word for me. Evolve, yeah. Okay? Um, so I've always just evolved and reinvented myself. And I never wanted... I just hid that part of me. It's like I always talk to you when I meet you in the gym working out and stuff that, you know, you got a couple guys coming there trying to be tough and they bully. And you know me, I'm a sweet guy. I'm a nice guy. Yeah. And... And I think I may have told you, I said, some of the sweetest and nicest guys I know are the baddest men I know. They don't have anything to prove. They'll give you the shirt on their back. And I always tell guys, I said, worst thing you want to do is confuse kindness with weakness. And a lot of these guys get in your face and people, you you have no idea who you're dealing with. Right. You have no idea. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people are are mysterious. You know, and because, like I told of a guy that's an old school convict in the gym, man. We were talking about somebody that says, dude, I have the proclivity. I can, I don't have guilt. You get at me, if you're the bad guy and the enemy, I see this bad guy, I'm a killer, dude. Right. I'm still that guy. I don't like that. But I, I'm, it's like I promised my wife. My wife has seen me take care of a couple of guys that had it coming to him. When she's run out of the house in the 90s and stuff. And, and she said, yeah, I'll tell you, right, they had it coming. But guess who's going to jail after all you've accomplished? And that's why I don't do, I'm never much of a crowd person. I don't go many places. I don't tolerate idiots very well. You know, and especially guys trying to be like, you know. Dude, it, it reminds me of a scene in one of my movies called Tombstone. Remember that movie? Uh, it sounds familiar. There's a but... scene in that movie with... Uh, Who's it with? Who's that movie? B- uh, Kurt Russell. Okay. It's about... It's I the gunfight. It's a scene in that movie with Billy Bob Thornton and Kurt Russell. Where Billy, where Kurt Russell is playing... Uh, 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 I think Wyatt Earp. Okay. And Billy Bob Thornton is like going around thumping his chest. And he comes out with a shotgun. He goes... And, you know, I'll fuck you up. Right. So Kurt Russell stands right in front of him. You know, and uh, and he just slaps his shit out of him. He said, well, go ahead and do it. Yeah. And Kurt Russell slaps his shit out of him again. Well, go ahead and do it. And, and, and Billy Bob Thornton just starts to twitch him. Yeah, and he goes, well, Kurt Russell slaps him again. Well, what you going to do? You going to pull that smoke wagon and do what you say? You know, yeah. and that's most of these guys today. They're the Billy Bob Thornton's because if you slap the shit out of them, they're not going to do anything. Sure. Yeah, you know what I, I mean? I, I and and, and there'll be there'll be the first one that they, they'll be the first one to uh hi honey, I'm in the middle of a podcast with my man Eric and this is my wife calling to check on me. That's my queen oh. of twenty one years. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't trying to interrupt. So so now you're part of this podcast, honey. <laughs> hi. And this is Eric. Hi, Hi, Mrs. Jonathan. You? Good, how yeah. are you? I just called to check on make make sure he's good. Oh, yeah. He's, he, even he's had a, he even had a cigar waiting for me, honey. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's we're smoking. Awesome. Yeah, I'm here with the mics, and we're in the middle of it. Can I get back, okay. please? Yes, you can. Okay. Nice meeting you. Bye. <laughs> oh, she sounds like a sweetheart. Oh, uh, Dude, you'll never find a more upstanding woman that has your back. That's amazing. 21 years you guys been together? Going on 21 years this wow. Christmas Eve. And I'll tell you how I met her before we, but we need to, you know, 
But, yeah, no, uh, the... So, but here's the thing I want to hit. Yeah, here's what, so that's the bully thing. You sure, know no, I mean? yeah, and, but and I, I've seen that. Yeah, I've but here's that. the thing I want to say, man. Out of all those years now, let me take you to the black and white TV when I'm watching Ceremonies and Dark uh, Old yeah. Man and Glenn Turner, yeah. who today is one of my mentors and my best friends all those years later. All the guys I was watching in all the movies that inspired me as a teenager, the original Shaft and Superfly and all those okay. things, all those guys have taken me under their wing to this day. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Amazing. But, and then that very play that inspired me to get off my ass that I'm watching on ABC special presentation, I ended up doing the 20th anniversary of that play, Equity Stage, here in L.A. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Wow. You know, but here's the thing. Before that, those guys that I'm watching, the Brandos, inspiring I mean, I end up in New York for a minute before I became, uh, I never became a member of the actor's studio. I had to audition even though Lee had invited me in to, sure. to um, what do you call it, to monitor, to, uh, you know, to monitor class and, and to, like know, to observe. Yeah, to observe like and all these things time. and then to get up and do something and show them, you know, that from Florida State, they even met, blah, 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 blah. I'm sitting in the chairs where Brando sat. Where Dean said, it's not there, no, they rescaled up everything, but we told him in the 70s, it wasn't before, where, you know, where, where Dean said. That's amazing, man. You know, Alec Baldwin used to come over from NYU and jump into the classes, and Mickey Rourke would come and jump into classes, wow. you know, and, and stuff, you know, and it's all those years. Let me, let me ask you, Ty, what's, because I... What's the first like project that you got offered that you were like, this is it? It's weird. When yeah. I thought this was it, it was never it because okay. I never really yeah. worked. You know, yeah, yeah, my yeah. first film. Yeah, your first big. My film. first film was a film. And first of all, I wouldn't have have a I wouldn't have had a film career at all if it had not been for theater in Los Angeles. Um, in the 80s, 90s, it was a renaissance here, man. It was so fucking awesome, dude. All the little theaters in everywhere. Everybody, casting directors and producers, directors, the film industry, they actually came out to these little plays where you saw just great work. And I had the opportunity to be in some of the greatest. I've, I've said, every play I've been to, the only most exciting plays that I've ever seen, I've never really seen because I've I was in them. <laughs> I've been blessed like that. Is is your passion more plays? You think theater? my passion is both. Okay, just acting. But I haven't been on stage. I've done almost eighty plays. Wow, that's a lot. You know, I've worked with the late August Wilson. Okay. You know, who's one of the greatest playwrights in America that we lost. I don't say African American because he is. Fences, two trains running, my rainy's black bottom. You know, plays. you know, matter of fact, Samuel L. Jackson is getting ready to open one of his plays mm -hmm. with Denzel's son. Okay, yeah, um, David. Yeah, D David. And with Samuel's wife directing on Broadway in about a week. I didn't even know Samuel was involved with play they, theater. Yeah, they all, all of my generation of actors. Wow. Samuel's older than me, but all of, you know, Denzel, all mm -hmm. of, we all come from theater, man. Sure. That's why young guys come to me, hey man, what's the best for the class? Do a play. Well, Denzel just did a Macbeth. Yeah, well, that was on Macbeth. screen. Yeah, we're well, sure. But about three or four or five years later, uh, ago, rather, Denzel did one of the hardest plays ever. Really? Which was, I think it was The Iceman Coming, or either Long, journey, long Day's Journey in the Night. Okay. Eugene O'Neill, uh, no, uh, yeah, Eugene O'Neill. Three or four hour play, dude. Jesus. Hard on mm -hmm. Broadway. Jesus. Denzel's a real deal, arts. Because oh, you don't have to go do the play. You're making enough money in film. Well, yeah, Hugh Jackman's the same. Yeah, Jackman yeah. does plays. Samuel's the same oh, way. Does, yeah. Samuel L. is the but, same but, way. But, but those and me guys and Samuel still have had movies. the same mentor, too. Wow. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen Samuel on screen in a while. Yeah. He looks like he's retired. No, no, he's you're not watching enough. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I, I don't, a, yeah. you know, like, but he's been doing it a long yeah, time, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, and he ain't gonna he's stop. He's been either. on screen for a long time. And he's not gonna stop. Yeah. Either, you know, um, but but the the thing about it, man, is um, 
What's with with Common? Oh, you, no, you asked me. I, I never answered. Which was yeah, your first big big project. It was, and I got that because of all the plays that I was doing, the sure. hot plays. Right. And my first, it was my first film, which was Oliver Stone's Salvador. Okay. Wow, Oliver Stone. Wow. Yeah, which was nominated for an Oscar the same year that Platoon was nominated for an Oscar. Oh shit. Who who did uh who did the the lead in Salvador? Yeah. James Woods, okay, who was know. also nominated for okay. Best Actor Oscar. What, what kind of movie was that? Dude, it's based on a true story about the 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 the, the Salvador when the the, the uh, was it a Vietnam movie? The, no, no, no. It's uh, in Salvador where the government, the Sandinistas. Oh, El Salvador. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was about the the battle between. I gotcha. Their country and and but the story was it's based. Still going on. The story was based on a real photojournalist. Okay. Okay. Who got fucked up down there, man? Yeah. You know, and his story him. is amazing. No, he, he oh. lived. I got to meet the real guy. Shit. You know, uh, he lived, but it was a, it's an amazing film. Matter of fact, um, they just celebrated the film in France, and one of the producers of the new the thing, he just sent me a brand book celebrating Salvador, all in French, with a. Uh, uh, DVD, uh, refurbished, uh, regen, re-digitized D- DVD of Salvador. He says, I talk about you in this bit, book and watch the movie. Y- you come off brilliantly in French. Because <laughs> it's all in French. You know, they have yeah, guys yeah, come yeah. in. And, That's know. amazing, man. Yeah. Wow. Look, Ty, we've yeah. been talking for an hour and a yeah, half, man. Yeah. I feel and like my I wife, can... And my wife is waiting on you. Yeah, me. I feel like I can talk to you for hours. Yeah, yeah. Genuinely. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it, but I know, like, Con Air was a big film. Um, you know, that was a big... I really want to kind of just ask you, did you ever imagine yourself... Would, do you ever have ambitions for being a lead? No. Okay, you always kind of saw yourself... I'm, I'm an actor's actor. Okay. I never... Uh, I mean, if that ever happened, I'm not against it. I never in, I never wanted to be... Stardom and being leads in movies has never been important to me. Okay, it so you always kind of knew... It's always your... about just a solid role that's me. Okay. And to make a decent living. Okay. You know what I mean? I'm an actor's actor, dude. Okay. And if you had... A, a advice for a, a young actor coming up, what would that be? Do as much theater as you possibly can. And remember that it's called show business. Something that, that I didn't realize early, be early on, and they don't really, to this day, really impact that. You know, they give you this false sense of confidence that if you're a brilliant actor and you focus on that, the cream will rise to the... That's bullshit. You know, brilliant actor is a component, but you got to go back. You got to go after it just like any other business. You know, you got to be able to put in, which is hard for a lot of actors. You know, I mean, that's why I have my own production company and my and writing. And I just wrote a dynamite Afrocentric post-Civil War Western that I'm trying to get. And I, and I got another gangster film that I wrote. And, and I'm, without sounding like an ego mani- maniac, I'm a dynamite writer, dude. And I got projects, I got two solid projects right now that I'm really trying to get an, a, a major director attached to and then find investors, and I'm determined. Um, but my, my advice is, number, four, number one, don't focus so much on the acting class as much as getting in a play and doing theater. Know that it's a business and stop thinking just as an actor. Think write, produce, always be a hired gun, a gun for hire, but don't wait on that, don't depend on that, start writing and producing and find your own little company and your own voice and start trying to find a way to get your own films made while you're auditioning and doing your own thing, it's great to be a hired gun, but create your own war. (laughs) That's amazing, so essentially be the best version of yourself. Yeah, Yeah. across the board. Across you know, the it ain't just about well, my agent and and I'm not, I'm not getting audition. Right. You know, fuck that. Right. That's yeah. a very tiny. What you're gonna sit around and wait for everybody to come to you your whole fucking career? Right. Or are you gonna be proactive, 
put a fire under whoever's representing you. In the meantime, <clears throat> create your own little company. Start learning how to write your own little screenplays, which is interesting to you, and making your own little films and getting it in festivals or whatever, and then putting it, and then at the same time, find a play and get on stage and work on your craft. Yeah. It's just not one thing, bro. Right. Never has been. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, man. And I, I love that. I love that you, you give that mentality. Well, Todd, man, it's right. awesome having you on here, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you and, for your interest. Uh, oh, absolutely. And, and I'm man. humbled by anybody who wants to hear anything about oh, my journey. Man. I'm humbled I by hope it. people I, listen. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not. The, the, the thing is, is, man, is also never take yourself that serious in this okay. game. Yeah. yeah. Take the work serious. Sure. There's Definitely. a difference. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're surrounded with movie stars and guys that do really well. Well, I, you know, don't yeah. talk to me and blah, blah, and I'm blah, blah. Because that's the only way they can find yeah. confidence. It's a false confidence, but it works for them. Me, I'm just me, man. But when, I, when, but when it's time to go to work, I want to see you step up. I want to be challenged, you know? Yeah. Well, there's, there's doers and there's showers. Yeah. Some people like to yeah. show up for sure, right, and right. some people do. I can do. get cool again. Yeah, there you okay. go, man. Ty, thank you so much, yeah. brother. Yes, appreciate sir. You, I appreciate you.